All right, well, all this weather makes you just want to stay home and eat some comfort food, right? A little comfort food at the end of a long day. But you know what? Having goals, nutritional goals for the new year, it can get in the way. So the question is, how do you stop those cravings and how do you stay on track with your goal? Good idea. For some, you might want to swap ideas in the new year. We're joined by owner of Body by Brittany, Britt Baird. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so first off, let's talk about staying on track in the new year. What are some of the tips for that? Because, you know, we're getting near the end of January. Some people might be a waning from that. Yeah, we're kind of at the point in the year where everybody sets a New Year's resolution, and now that we're three weeks in, you know, the resolutions are kind of sliding a bit. So the best thing I always say, my number one tip is, you have to choose something that's sustainable. If you can't stick with something for three to six months down the year, it's not gonna work for you. So the best way to do that is start by making small swaps. You can't overdo everything at once and just kind of flip your life upside down. If you go that route, it's gonna be way overwhelming, you're not gonna be able to finish, and you, you know, you're gonna wanna eat different foods and you're gonna crave different things. And so the best way is just make small swaps and go into it with a plan. Food swaps are such a great idea because yeah. you're just basically replacing the quote unquote bad foods, right? Mm -hmm. With better choices. So what's like the number one question you get asked about food swaps? I mean, you brought in some chips here. Yeah, I went right for the yeah. chips and you were like, hey, hey, yeah. No, hey. <laughs> yeah, so the whole goal of losing weight or the way it happens is being in a calorie deficit. And now no food is inherently good or bad, right? Food doesn't have morality. So if you're craving something Thing, you should definitely have that food but what you can do is make lower calorie swaps so we talked about you know comfort food and snacking a lot of people will turn right to the salty sure. right and go for the chips but a lesser calorie option would be something like these veggie chips is it the perfect picture of health no probably not <laughs> but it is less calorie dense and it could help you reach your goals a little bit easier while still kind of giving into the things you love you know so not so, perfect but a little bit better yeah a little yeah. better we're not talking about doing things perfectly if you try to be perfect again you're going to burn out it's just sure. it's not possible and so. that that kind of leads into the salad because you make this nice salad you got your fresh you know yeah. lettuce you got some greens in there some radishes and then you smother it in like thousands islands dressing and right. you, you take it all away right so what do you suggest for that yeah so um this is just a homemade dressing and you know it does take a, a couple seconds it's pretty quick but it's just some olive oil which is full of healthy monounsaturated fats it's full of polyphenols which act like antioxidants it can help improve your um, bad cholesterol which is your ldl um, and so instead of, you know, kind of reaching for the grocery store dressings, maybe make something from home that has a little bit of olive oil where you can really control what's inside of it. Again, not perfect. Olive oil still can have a bunch of calories, but it's better than a store-bought version because you can control what goes inside. So, all right, simple. And then, okay, so down here, this smells absolutely fantastic. I'm guessing these are apples and cinnamon? These are pears, yeah. Oh, they're pears, okay. Yeah. So close. Yeah. So close, but I do do this with apples, and this is just, when I'm craving sweets, and I do, I have a big sweet tooth, um, that is my downfall, I will lean into fruit. Fruit is something that I think is really versatile. You can do tons of stuff with it. This is one of those things. It's so simple. It's just a couple of cut up Bartlett pears with some cinnamon and some honey throw it in the oven and you can use it as a topping for pancakes, waffles, you know, kind of go the IHOP route with it. Mm -hmm. Or um, you can have it over even ice cream if you wanted to, or if you want to make it healthier, pair it with like a vanilla yogurt. So just a way to kind of curb your sweet tooth, but not go overboard. So kind of like a baked dessert. Yeah, just a baked dessert. So are the sugars we get from apples and pears better than like refined sugar? Or is it just easier to think we're doing something healthier? No, um, so it's not so much the sugar as it's the other nutrients that come with it, right? You're gonna get more vitamins and minerals inside of fruit than you would, and it's way, so with processed sugars and processed foods, they're way easier to overconsume. They're what we consider hyper palatable foods, and you can eat way more than you would, you know, if you sat down to eat a whole bowl of fruit. Eating a whole bowl of fruit is gonna be pretty daunting, but none of us pause when we eat a whole bowl of ice cream, right? It's like right out the window. Yeah, <laughs> sure. exactly, got the big tub in front of you. Yeah, so better is subjective, right? Because a carb is a carb is a carb. Your body's gonna process it very similarly, but when it comes to satiety, when it comes to choosing nutrient-dense foods that are actually gonna benefit your overall health, fruit and, you know, things with, um, less refined carbs are gonna be the way to go. Yeah, all right, and speaking of staying satisfied, you mm -hmm. know, so many people I feel like struggle with protein choices. You often yes. get asked, what are some all good protein time. choices? Yeah, all the time. So any protein choice is a good protein choice, um, but there are certain proteins that do have a little bit more benefit as in they're more highly bioavailability or highly bioavailable. These things are, you know, beef, chicken, 
turkey. Um, but you know, a lot of vegans and vegetarians need protein too. You can lean into pea protein powders, those types of things. Um, but a good rule of thumb is if you're struggling to get protein, you can kind of measure how much protein you should have per meal with the palm of your hand. So one palm's worth of protein um, at each meal and you should be good to go. It's about 20 or 30 grams and that should get you where you need for the day. All right, and I need to know, when it comes to oils, is there a healthier yeah. oil or when you're cooking with oil, is there an alternative that you'd uh, suggest? Yeah, so I use olive oil. Um, that's just what my mom used growing up mm -hmm. and so that's what I do, that's what I use. Um, Healthier alternatives, yeah, something that's probably, this is, you know, mechanically pressed and it's not super processed, it's not processed at a high heat. It's probably a little better because it has the polyphenols that don't, you know, get lost in shelf-stable oils. Um, so olive oil is a healthy option, but avocado oil, um, anything really that's probably not just tons of vegetable oil or, you know, so soybean and so, I'm sorry, soybean oil. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. to know. Yeah, great thank to know. Excellent. All right, thank you so much, Brittany. Yeah, thanks for we having me. We appreciate it. Body by Brittany, that's where people Body go, right? Body by Brittany, that's correct. All right, All right. yeah. Thanks thank for coming you. in.